<laughs> last factor. Failing all of these, if, if they don't define it for you, if they don't give you some nice, easy, required to prove result that will show it to you, and if the language is <coughs> ambiguous, okay? Hopefully it's not. Then, just pick one. Just pick one. Um, whichever, whichever is more convenient to you. Now, I don't know how comfortable you feel with this idea that you can just willy nilly put in a constant because it's convenient or not convenient. But actually, we've already been doing this, just not in this context, okay? I will give you two examples. Uh, example one. What's this situation? We recognize this, don't we? This is simple harmonic motion, yes? Okay, now, a classic sort of question from here is, okay, get your equation for v squared, right? And then go ahead and do something with that, okay? Well, usually we would probably say, if I want v squared, right, we would use half v squared on this side, right? Half v squared. Okay, so now what do you do? You integrate. So that gives you half v squared equals. Now what happens here? Divide by two, increase the power. Now, what I have to include here, since it's an indefinite integral, is a constant, right? So you could call it c if you want. However, if you want to make things nice and neat for you, you might notice sometimes the textbook does this. It says, well, let's just call that half c. Right? And you're like, wait, what do you mean it's half c? It's, it's c, isn't it? Uh, but we're playing the same game that we played before versus uh, when we were trying to think about understanding, right? C, if C is a constant, then half C will also be a constant, right? So it doesn't matter. It's just nice and convenient to us now because when I get my equation for V squared by multiplying everything by two, minus four X squared plus C, I don't have just another number to worry about, okay? So you see in this case, this simple harmonic motion case, it's just more convenient for me to define the constant in a way that's Nice and neat. Does that make sense? Now that's kind of obvious. It's kind of plain, right? Let me give you a somewhat more complicated example that I got asked about. Sometimes textbooks will give this in a, in a solution at the end, and they give no explanation for this. But this is what they're really doing. So here's example. I need more space for this one. Here's example two. OK. Suppose what you get given is this. You get given an equation for. Um, velocity, sorry, the change in velocity with respect to displacement. No big deal. And suppose where we're going is we want an equation for displacement in terms of velocity. Right? So this is the question. Right? Now, just march through this with me. What might we do at this point? This is actually not that hard. It's all in terms of the right variables, right? What would I do? You integrate. So you get V equals log X. And then you've got a constant flying around, right? Okay, now at this point what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to rearrange this business, right? You want to make x the subject. It can be done, right? But it's actually neater for me, rather than to say, let's call that c, right? I might call this log a, okay? If, if I know that this thing's going to be positive. Okay? Um, actually, it doesn't really matter. A, it's just another constant. This is where sometimes textbooks get a bit naughty and they don't tell you what A is or where it comes from, okay? But can you see, if I have some constant, any constant, I can just phrase it in terms of log of some other number, some other constant. These are both constants, no problems. Why is this useful? I can do log laws on this, right? And I don't have to worry about there being two terms here. The log laws tell me that this is equal to log of ax, right? So now this is really easy to rewrite. I can put this back into an additional equation, right? And then I get this. Okay. Now of course you can get another equation for displacement in terms of velocity if you went from here, but I think this is much neater. It's much easier to work with and it makes some of the relationships a little more obvious. Okay. So what's my point? That with regard to constants, right? In the right context, you really can pick whatever you like that makes the mathematics easier to work with. Okay? And in fact, without, without noticing it, we've been doing this all along. Because for instance, you know, it's never as neat as this. You know, 
resistance is not necessarily exactly proportional to velocity at a linear relationship or to the square of the velocity. You know, in real life, it's probably, you know, proportional to, I don't know, some stupid thing like mkv to the power of 1.8. Well, I don't know. You have to get a wind tunnel out and test it out with air resistance and so on. Okay, that's, an engineer will work that out. But my point is, it's not some neat number. We choose a neat number to make the mathematics easier to work with. And it's still, like, it's close enough for us that we can still get useful information out of the situation. Okay? So I, I felt a little bit awkward sort of leaving you at this point, but that's kind of where the maths ends, right? Hopefully you'll never get to point four, right? Like I said, 90% of questions will catch you here, right? Another 9% of questions will catch you here. The, this will be hopefully catching all the rest and then, you know, it's mostly in textbooks where they're sort of a little more fast and loose and they're like, you can just look at the answer and check which one I meant, right? Um, where, they, where they do this and they, and they let you sort of flounder around and work out which one you should choose, okay?